Hello everyone, someone Bard here, and welcome to a new movie review. When it comes to fantasy films from the 80s, many of them are not so good. At least for me. They come as either really boring, don't really know what to think about, or could have been something more. It's a weak genre back then, and despite it getting better or worse as time moves on, the fantasies of the 80s really don't grab me a whole lot. However, there are a few of them that I find to be pretty good, and also watched again on occasion. And today's movie is certainly one of them. And in time for its 30th anniversary, it is the second film that George Lucas and Ron Howard have worked together on, and is simply enjoyable in many aspects. Willow. A prophecy depicts of a child born to rule as queen, and end the reign of the evil Queen Bavmorda, who plots to destroy the child. But after the child's birth, a nursemaid takes the baby away from Bavmorda's castle, and lets it float down the river once she's been spotted. Yet the baby arrives at the home of an Alwyn farmer named Willow Upgood, who dreams of being a sorcerer. But as soon as Bavmorda's dogs attacks an Alwyn festival looking for the baby, Willow and his family bring her to the High Council, and the High Alwyn suggest taking the baby out beyond their village until they find a Daikini, who is a tall human to them. Soon Willow and a few of his companions find a Daikini named Mad Mardigan, and soon Willow and Mad Mardigan are left to take the baby to her home, eventually finding that the baby, named Owen on Domain, is a princess, and coming across allies and foes along the way, including pint-sized men named Brownies, Shrusha, Bavmorda's daughter, and General Kale, trying to find the baby, and a sorceress named Finn Rizel, who was turned into an animal by Bavmorda. For what this film has to offer, there's like plenty to see and enjoy, and many of them are surprisingly good. Just about everything in the film works very well. The effects are pretty good, including the transformation scene, which was one of, if not the first use of having computerized morphine, and it's done to great effect, even for being simple. The characters are pretty good, and for the actor playing the title role, even for being known in supporting roles, does very well, despite this being the only time he's the main lead, and gets the third villain in the credits, cause he deserves more than this. I mean he does, but not to this extent. The whole setting is very nice, predating other fantasies like Lord of the Rings, and some bits do make it stand out from others. And yes, some of the story does feel a bit Moses-esque and is a bit generic, but again, some parts do make it stand out from others. And overall, it's still pretty nice. The music from the late James Horner is very lovely, and is likely an honorable mention for my top 10 favorite scores from him. It feels very much like a fantasy and sounds very adventurous in some points. It's fascinating to hear when going from being moving and sweeping to being comedic and at times epic. It's very much one of his most underrated. And for more of a personal preference, when I was very young, I used to remember a few shots from the film, and didn't know if they connect or even if they're from the same movie. I remember the baby being born, which was not only the first shot in the film, but it did make me feel uncomfortable just seeing that image. I remember the sledding down a snowy mountain, and that didn't seem like it was from the same film since it was so different. And I remember a monster in a castle setting, and where it did look cool, it didn't strike me at all from being in the same film. But when I watch it again as I got older, all of the scenes I remember did begin to make sense, and I start to like it even more knowing the people who are behind it. But not everything about it is all that great. For instance, some of the effects are really dated and very off, in particular with the brownies. They really don't look like they are there and it's a really bad compositing. The lighting is very off, the size is incorrect on occasion, and the blending of it all doesn't match at times. That and the brownies can be annoying, and are hard to tell what they're saying at times. And also that, oh wait, those are the only problems I have with the film. Okay, moving on. But the actors who played the characters are pretty good. Val Kilmer plays Mad Mardigan. Joanne Wally plays Sorsha. Warwick Davis plays Willow Upgood. Gene Marsh plays Queen Babmorda. Billy Barty plays High Aldwin. Kevin Pollock plays Rule. Rick Overton plays Frangine. Gavin O'Hurley plays Eric Falber, Patricia Hayes plays Finn Rizal, Pat Roach plays General Kale, Mark Northover plays Burgercut, David Steinberg plays Migosh, Phil Fondacaro plays Funkar, and Miller Hovo plays Sarendla. As a whole, this movie is wonderful. The characters are really good, 
the story is very nice, and the effects range from pretty good to really lame. Director Ron Howard had made a good fantasy adventure in collaboration with George Lucas and the great production team that worked on it. Despite that some of the effects lack good lighting and compositing and the brownies might be a bit annoying, everything else works for the better. There's plenty of really good elements in it, and to where I remember bits and pieces of it when I was very little, and then more of it as I got older, it still works even for being out for 30 years. I love the music, I enjoy the effects, I like the characters, I admire the setting, I could just embrace the whole film. I never get bored of it, and I enjoy watching this film anytime I see it. So today, this movie will begin a rating of... Three stars. So thank you for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Support me on Patreon. And until next time, for a new video.